All right, hi, hello. My name is Peter Jackson Anton. I'm a student and I make these videos to practice teaching because I wanna be a teacher of art and specifically animals. So we're gonna go into our Sketchbook Pro and today I wanna think about, I wanna talk about and think about the rhythm lines of cats. So I'm working on a 100 cat challenge right now and so what I'm doing is I'm figuring out simplifications that uh, emerge amongst all different types of cats. So what, what, rhythm, what simple lines can we look for that exist across all species of cats? And that can actually extend to different, different animals altogether. So this would work on cows and horses. So I'm gonna be looking for rhythm lines. Now, by rhythm lines, I mean, there's something called the Riley rhythms which he's not the only one to have done this, but basically it's a simplification of the muscles and the bones in the head, the human head, that allow you to see very simply what's going on with, without all of the detail of a person's hair and a person's beard and their skin and if they've got, uh, I don't know, like blemishes uh, if they've got, you know, the way the shadows are falling on the face, all the things like that. It's just a simplification of the anatomy so that if you're drawing from imagination, you can take these things and adjust them. And it gives you a, a set of things to look for every time. So it's kind of like a, not a formula, but just things to look for. It's, uh, so that way you don't have to go into each head and be like, well, what do I do here? I don't know how to approach it. So it gives you, okay, you can look for this rhythm line here. That might be very prominent on your model. Or the, the rhythm of the brow might be very prominent. And you can sort of pick and choose which of these rhythms you use to express the form of, your, of the subject that you're drawing. So with this cat, for example, I'm gonna start a new layer. I'm gonna look at this. And I've chosen a hairless cat because it's gonna allow us to focus on the muscles and the bones rather than the fur. So for this cat, this is very complex. Let's zoom in a bit. So we can really get overwhelmed by the detail. See, look at how complex this is. If you were to draw every one of these details, you would get overwhelmed. You'd have to draw all these little folds. And that's very confusing. But if we simplify it, it's not gonna be as hard. So the big shapes we could look for, we could either block it in like this. This would be the block in method where we block it in like this. That's definitely an option. But we're gonna use a more gestural method right now. So we're gonna use, so what I'm looking for are the rhythms. So I see a rhythm here across the top of the head. So I'm gonna draw in that rhythm Oops, that's a, uh, I've chosen the wrong, I want this, steady stroke. So I can do a rhythm here, okay? That's a rhythm I see. One of the first rhythms I go for is the brow. I go from brow to brow. And the reason for this is not just to establish the, that the eyes are lining up properly and that they're not getting asymmetrical and wonky, but also to establish the tilt of the head. So if I were going to draw a cat, uh, say from a reference, and the reference is like this, and you can see in this reference that if you look at it, the brow is actually a bit tilted this way. So if I don't pay attention to that, and I just start drawing an eye up here, and an eye here, and a nose, but I haven't established that brow, I might end up drawing it like this which is wrong because this one's actually tilted a bit down to the left like this. So if you establish that brow line and that center line first, you've also established the tilt of the head. I'm gonna increase my opacity by a lot. Uh, I don't want it that big. Let me go back a bit. See if that's a good weapon. Okay, I like that. So here, now we're establishing the center line. So that establishes the tilt of the head as well. And that's important because we're gonna be building upon that. Now, we also wanna get the overall shape of the head. So once you've gotten this, you can either do this before or after, just experiment with it and see what works for you. Go for this kite shape. It's shaped like a kite. It goes from the, it's from brow to brow. 
and then from the top of the head out to the side. So we create a triangle where the forehead is, and then we come down here to here, that kind of a shape. So that's that kite shape. Now you might ask, why don't we go all the way down to the mouth? And that's simply because this is actually a drop. That doesn't appear, it's not going to appear in the frontal view, but in a three, three quarters view, we can't extend this kite all the way down here because that, that doesn't work if we're not in frontal view. Basically, if we do, like, say we're in a three fourths view, so we're like this down here in this corner, like this, we've got this kite shape, but then we need to drop down where the mouth is. It doesn't just keep going straight after the kite. It doesn't go like this. It drops down where the nose is. So that's why we in the kite at the nose. Now, we can go ahead and drop the entire shape of the skull. I like getting the jaw. I come in with the jaw. I get the bottom of the mouth. We can get that cheekbone in. And these are just things you can look for on every cat. And this is sometimes prominent. Uh, it depends on how prominent this circular shape. It's like two circles. You might see more of the top of the circle or less. Let me get a different color for that so it stands out a bit more. Let's use a red. See, we've got these kind of, it's like an infinity symbol like this. So it's an infinity symbol right here, okay? And then we've got the, uh, the nose, we'll use green for that, which is a triangle. And if we're gonna get more specific with it later, think of that as a skull shape, okay? It's like this, and then the, the nostrils are like the eyes of the skull, and then we'll have the the bottom of the skull. So if I look up cat nose, do you see what I'm talking about with the skull? See, these would be the eyes of the skull. This would be the cranium, and then this would be the uh, the 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 teeth, the uh, the jaw. It's more like the upper half of a skull than the than the full skull, but that's what I like to visualize. This you can think about a skull or a. Uh, it kind of looks like a longhorn. Like if you look up a longhorn. See, it kind of has this kind of feel to it, where it's like this uh, skeleton of a longhorn, right? Where this would be the head, and these would be the horns. So you can kind of visualize that kind of a shape too with cats, this kind of longhorn feel. See that? So we'll go up with the ears. I like to simplify to here, and then down. And then the tips of the ears are very often going to be rounded. It's rare that I see very pointy ears unless it's created by fur. So I really mostly see the rounded tips. It's, so they're triangles with rounded tips. And a lot of times cats will have these big ears with these notches. So this is going to be a rhythm you see a lot. This right here. And if there's fur, a lot of times we'll see something like this. And that'll be the fur coming out. Then we'll come down. A lot of times with cats, you're gonna see this kind of a shape with the ear. It's not just a straight line. A lot of times it's gonna be, so the top will be a straight line. Then we'll have the rounded tip. This is just a pattern I've seen emerge from drawing a bunch of cats is a lot of times it'll be like this, where we'll come down, we'll zigzag out and it gets wider at the base. And then we'll have this coming in like this. And an idea you want to think of with the ears is it's like a cone. So here's the base of it. And then it opens up like this. And it's like this. So think of like if you if you know like a, a book end. So a, uh, let's look up a book end. Uh, let's see if I can find something. It's kind of like these, um, 
it's kind of like these, uh, like this. This is similar to what I'm talking about. We'll see if we can find similar images. So, hmm. Trying to find a good one. Maybe round. But think of this book, see, kind of like this, except with rounded ends. It's kind of like a lopped off circle. Yeah, I can't really find any good examples here, but uh, think of that flat side for the ear. This this being like a, it's like a, kind of like a cave or something where you have this opening, a rounded back, and then a rounded base, okay? So we're drawing through the form here and I'm gonna soften the parts that wouldn't be showing through. And the way you can remember that is, think about the ears are designed to trap sound. So it's kind of like this shape. Like if you cup your hands and put them up here, these are helpful for catching the sound, right? The sound will go into the ear. It's like, uh, kind of like a trumpet almost, except not projecting sound, but receiving sound. So that's a way you can think of the ear shapes. So those would be the simplified shapes that I think about and then also the eye. The eyes are just spheres. Don't forget that the eyes are spheres. And then over those spheres, we're gonna wrap skin, okay? The skin wraps over. And now another thing to note with cats is that their eyes are very often slanted. They don't just go flat. Like in a lot of humans, our eyes will be flat. Not all humans. Some humans will have more eyes that are like this, and some humans will actually have eyes that are like sloping downwards and out like this, that are a little bit like sliding off the side of the face. Some humans will have eyes that are pointing down towards the center of the face, and other humans will have eyes that are flat. But cats have eyes that are pointed down in, in all the ones I've seen. They're pointed down. And then the skin goes over. Let me use a different color like this. Let me actually erase this and uh, yeah, so I can show you more specifically. So the eyes go like this and I like to break it up with straight lines if I can. To simplify the curves with straight lines is very helpful for getting the angles right because if you try to approximate the curve you might end up like this whereas in actuality it ends slanting downwards. So if you use straight lines to simplify curvy lines, it makes it a lot easier to get right. And then you can always make it curvy later, going over the top of it, okay? So that sits like that. And those are pretty much the rhythms that I look for, okay? So let's delete all this. We're gonna go into a different photo. I'm gonna show you how I would do a different one. Now the first thing I do with this one, again, I get that center line. I get a better color, something. I, for the colors, let's see, this is a warm image, a lot of orange, so I'm thinking a blue is going to help me makes, make a more distinct line, so let's try that, okay. There's my first rhythm. That establishes tilt of the head alongside this. So now we have a crosshairs. Okay. It depends on how I were going to draw this. If I were drawing this out of my head, I might start with that ball of the skull and then put the crosshairs on and then do the kite shape. It just depends on what process you want to use. Or I might start with kind of a very gestural feel where I get the ball and then I'm like, okay, the ears come out like this. I could start with a gesture and then I'll go like this and then I'll get that crosshairs here, and I'll, I'm starting a much looser, getting the eyes here, getting the triangular shape of the ears, like this, and I'm just getting the gesture, and I'm getting a sense of movement, and then I'll go in and work out all the details of like the eyes after I get that loose, loose feel to it, but another way you could work is to block it in with straight lines if you're doing a longer drawing, and you're blocking in the shadow shapes, you might want to block it in with straight lines like this. Get all the shapes working with straight lines. 
but that's beyond the scope of this video. In this video, I really just want to talk about the rhythms that we can look for. So that, those are two rhythms, and these will work on any animal. Always you can find those crosshairs. You can also find, as long as you're able to look at the face, you can do this rhythm, which is the kite. And this will work in three quarters. And then we go down to the top of the nose. Here. And actually, if you want to, in cats, you could actually change this kite shape to something more like this where we're coming down from the top of the eye to the nose. Let's see if we can find something more, yeah, offensive to uh, make this more visible. Yeah, see, this kind of a rhythm. Do like that. Because a lot of times a cat on this one is gonna feed like this. We're gonna get this sort of a feel. It's almost like a flying V where it's like up, down, up, down. So you can either go like this and get this type of a shape, or it's a lot of it is personal preference because this stuff doesn't actually exist. It's just, uh, it's, it's how you see it. So some people might see it one way, other people might see it another way. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this flying V shape simplification, where I take this flying V right here, come to the center line, go up, out, and get the other wing. So that's the flying V, okay? And then, if we can soften that up so we can work over it, we get that flying V, and what that does is it ties it back into the center line and then we can just grab the nose. Maybe we tuck these in. A lot of times we'll go from the corners of the eyes, like right here, down to here. That tapering is very distinct in cats. We taper here. We get that another little V shape here. Cats have a lot of triangles in their design, so when in doubt, think triangle shape. There's It doesn't go straight so look, look, here's a good distinction. The mouth is not like an X, right? It doesn't go from nose to mouth like an X. It's more like an hourglass. So what I mean by that is, let's look at this. We're gonna zoom in. Doop. An hourglass shape. So it's like, here's the top half of the hourglass. Then, we stop and we have this straight line here. So that straight line is very important. Otherwise, you're gonna get the mouth too close to the nose. So it's kind of like that. It's almost like a stick person where we have the body of the stick person and then he's got his shoulders, he's raising his arms in the air and then he's got his little legs. So that's one way you can think of it, okay? So that's a simplification for the mouth. Here's another kind of rhythm that you can look for. There's no hard and fast rules with this. These are just ideas that if you see one you like, you can start using it. You can squint your eyes and look for the big shapes that you see, and this is more breaking things into planes. So this shape here, where we come down here, and I'm gonna show you what I see, and then if you if you want to look for these shapes, you can. If you're if you're like ah, I don't think I'll remember that very well, then then you don't have to. Let's see. We'll go here, here. Okay. There's a shape right there. You can go for this kind of. Then we're gonna do the lower half of it. It's kind of a vase. We'll go out. And I see this, and I see this. And that would go up here and up here. And then you might include the nose in that, or you might just look for this big shape right here. I don't know what you would call this shape. It's kind of like a vase, or you could break it up into two parts where it's like an arrow. That's probably a, the best way to remember it is it's like an arrow kind of a shape up here. And then 
I don't know if there's a classy way to sh to say this. It kind of looks like a ball sack. <laughs> it kind of looks like a ball sack. So think like if you're thinking a cat's mouth, think just hanging ball sack, and if that that'll help you remember most likely. <laughs> That's, that's I, I can think of no better example than that. I mean, you could also think of the infinity symbol, but that's not as uh, I don't think that's gonna remember. I don't think you're gonna remember that one as well. And it also doesn't include the upper portion of it. Okay. You could also think of the infinity symbol. Then you have kind of a. On top of that, you have this kind of like a I don't know it's not really an arrow yeah I don't I think the best way to remember remember it is probably just ball sack that's the best way to remember it just draw that down here like this that's probably gonna be your best bet for remembering what that shape looks like at least in the front view okay it's gonna be different in side views and profiles but if you're if you need a formula for remembering how to draw things in the front Ball sack. And then we have the eyes. Remember those slant down. And the pupils, a lot of times, it varies. Some I've seen are more round. Some are just lines. A lot of times, it's interesting, the eyes will usually point in, right? They're not up straight up and down, right? Look at that. The eyes aren't straight up and down here. They actually point in towards the center of the head. So just remember that. And so this is another rhythm would just be the connection where the ears connect, the angle at which the ears connect. Another thing to look for is a lot of times with fur, the top of the head is gonna look flat. Sometimes it'll present more like this. That'll depend a lot on the fur. It might be a peak. It might be a flat line. It really depends. Okay. So those are pretty much the rhythms I would use here. Again, we can see in the ears, these ones are less pointy than the last model we had, but they've still got an overall triangular feel. They don't widen as much at the base, like they don't have this pattern at the base. They have this, and then they go in like this. See, whenever I can straight simplify to a straight line, I like to, because it just helps me understand it. It gives a very definitive break. If you've just got a bunch of curves, it's hard to figure out where the corners are and where things turn exactly. Whereas if you if you have straight lines, you can be more decisive and figure out where the corners are, which helps you light forms. Okay. A lot of times also when you have a cat with fur, the connection with the neck is not very distinct. See, on this hairless cat, we have a very clear sense of this is the head and this is the body, right? We can see that very clearly. But see, with this cat, it's where does the where does the head end? Well, it's somewhere around here, but the neck actually disappears under all this fur. And we kind of, we can't see, that's why I chose a hairless cat, because it's very hard to see the anatomy of this. And if you were to draw all the anatomy of this, it'd be very confusing. So you kind of have to simplify it into shapes when you've got a lot of fur like this. See how indistinct the head's connection to the body becomes? It's like, where does the head... I mean, we, we know because we were just looking at it, but if you didn't know already, it's like, where does the head end and the body begin? It's really hard to tell. And same with the ear. Where does the ear begin and the head end? You know, you don't really... It's hard to tell. But see what I was just talking about with that straight line? It's it, the line at the top of the head becomes much more straight and less of a peak when you have all that hair on top. So these are just things to note. All right, so let's go into the skull a bit. See, we can see this zygomatic arch. That's the cheekbone, right? And then we go all the way around. We wrap around to the cranium. This connects to the cranium, this part right here. And it's like a... a Think of it like a bridge that goes over a river. A bridge going over the river. It goes, if we're looking at it from the top, it goes out from the skull like this and in. And on the other side, it's like out and in. Okay? And the reason for that is then we can have this, think of this, uh, this jawbone like a river that goes, that flows underneath the bridge of the zygomatic arch. And then the hinge for the jaw 
is around here. So it hinges here and then it opens out like this and here would be the, the, the jaw opens like this. Think of like a treasure chest opening, okay? So we've got the zygomatic, we've got the jawbone, which is the uh, mandible. The jawbone is the mandible, the cheekbone is the zygomatic arch. Uh, one interesting thing to note is that the cat is a predator. That means that the eyes are facing forward because we need to see our prey and we need to hunt. On a deer, uh, we have, so let me look for a deer skull. We're gonna have the eyes facing towards the sides. And this is true of grazing animals like goats, cows, sheep. They're, see, their eyes are on the side. Whereas uh, humans and dogs and cats, we're, they're gonna have eyes in the front because they're chasing prey, okay? So just note that. It's an interesting thing to note. On humans, our skulls have, so human skull, our eye, the eye sockets are totally closed in. On cat skulls, there's this open space here. And what happens is we have the eye now the scale of this eye might be off, I'm not exactly sure, but basically, so go go look up the actual scale of the eyes if you're more curious about this. I just wanna communicate the idea to you. Basically, we're gonna have the, the eyeball that sits in this socket, and then we're gonna have the muscles around here which allows you to turn the eye in various directions, okay? So the muscles sitting around the eye, and then we're gonna have the skin which wraps over the eye so that you can blink to protect the eye from dust, to re-wet the eye, and then the pupil would be pointing, well, the pupil can turn, it can either be facing forward or to the side. So that's how the eye sits in the socket. Now, I'll do a video at some point where we, uh, do all the muscles over the skull. I know Aaron Blaze does a really good series of videos where he does it much better than I can. Um, go to any his big cats videos on his uh, website, Creature Art Teacher, if you're curious about how the muscles fit over the skull. He does a really great job with that. Now the nose, actually, so the nose, think about your own nose. This part of your nose, if you look at me in the little screen down here, I'm grabbing my nose. The soft part of your nose, you can feel it. And then go ahead and feel where you're, where you where it's not soft anymore, and where it starts getting harder. And that's see if you can feel the bone. See, there's a point where you can feel like that it turns to bone, and that's because the first part of the nose is bone, but then it turns into cartilage. So it this part of the nose is cartilage. And that's why part of the reason why the why why skulls don't look exactly the same as the uh, profile of a cat because we don't have, include that cartilage. Okay, so that's the reason the nose looks different on a skull is because you need to include that cartilage if you want it to resemble the animal more. Like think of an elephant skull. And an elephant skull, see that? Well, where's the trunk? Well, the trunk attaches here to the bone, okay? That would be a more extreme example. All right, so that's pretty much what I wanna cover with the skull. This would be, this ridge is where muscles of the neck attach. Here, down here, is where the spine would attach. Uh, we've got the, see, look here. See how the teeth are deep embedded in the skull? And we've got this rhythm that goes down here from the tooth. In dogs, a lot of times you'll have a rhythm that goes, I actually don't wanna cover that, but there's a rhythm in dogs where it drops down very heavily. So sometimes the rhythms of the skull are very useful. I think in cats, this rhythm of the canine tooth is really helpful. And this sweeping of the jaw this sweeping of the jaw outward can be very helpful. This feeling of the brow. Note that the shape of it is very elongated. It's kind of like a, think of a good shape that will help you remember this. I like to think of a football for cats. 
I'm just going over and I'm getting a feel for how these shapes work, how they attach, how they flow. That's really the point of today's video, is just getting a feeling for the flow. You don't need to know every detail of the skull, but it's good to know where the attachments are, and just enough that you understand so that it doesn't get in the way of your ability to draw cats. So learn enough anatomy to help you draw real cats better. That's what I would say. And if your understanding of anatomy is hampering you, go learn more anatomy. But you don't need to learn everything about anatomy. There are plenty of artists who don't know very much about anatomy who just are really good at drawing, so they don't need to learn anatomy. So know, learn as much anatomy as you need to. Now this is the lower jaw. It goes, so the, from above it would be like this. So it's a triangle shape. Just like our jaw, if you look under here, it's a triangle shape. It starts out wide and then it tapers in. It's like the the like a boat, like the bow of a boat or a canoe. Think of that kind of feel. And then here, here's where it would attach to the skull. Here's the hinge. And then here, right here, these the peaks of it, those are what go underneath the zygomatic or the cheekbone. Oops. Turn on. There we go. Okay. And we'll turn off that layer. I just want to give you some understanding of the skull. So look at this. Look at this smooth arc. It's very smooth, right? That's why I think football shape. Because look at how smooth that is. It's like... It's almost like a, a, a bun, like a, so a bun. Yeah, it's kind of like a bun from the side. See, it's like this shape. It's like if you look at a hamburger bun from the side, profile view, think just hamburger. That's kind of the feel. Whereas opposed to a dog, it's very different. It's not like a... It's not like a hamburger, it's much more rigid. See, with a dog, look at this. You go out, down, out, down, out, down. Well, actually, so in the skull, the dogs would be out, down, out, down. But when you have the, uh, on a not a skull, but an actual dog, it's gonna be out, down, out, because we're gonna have the nose, see? But on a cat, it's much more like this. And if we were, on an actual cat, it would be tilted down more. So it'd be more like, you know, this, this. If we were a cat, an actual cat, it wouldn't be just looking at this weird angle where its eyes are up like that, most likely. It could happen, but it's probably going to be tilted down more like this. So it's going to be have that kind of feel to it. So we have that. But then again, it's the same stuff we were talking about. It's kind of like we loop around. This flows in over here. It's kind of like a cane shape. So you're a question mark kind of a feel. We have this jaw, which loops around here. And it's good just to get a feel for this stuff. This wraps all the way around here. And just get a feel for these rhythm lines and see what emerges to you as important. And these will help you simplify stuff and draw it from imagination, right? Because if I draw this, you know, if I, I lay in a cat from imagination, well, then I don't have to memorize every detail. It's just like, oh, I remember that feel was kind of like, and maybe I want to draw a rounder and fatter cat. So. So if I want to draw a cat skull, I'm just like, okay, it was kind of like that. It was kind of like that. Or maybe I'm designing another creature. But I understand the rhythms of the skull, and then I can manipulate them. And then I can design my own kind of skulls. And maybe I want to elongate the canines. Maybe I want to wrap around here. And I remember these rhythms. And then you work out the details. But as far as just getting the gesture in, right? So that would be a fatter version. Maybe you want to do a longer version where you really exaggerate. Well, I've got the, I know the main rhythm goes like that. I know it goes, and I want to elongate it. So maybe I go like that. I know this man, the, uh, yeah, the mandible rhythm goes like that. The jaw goes like that. Upper teeth go like that. 
the question mark. I remember there was a question mark kind of a shape, so I can go like that. And then I have the I, I need to have a place for the muscles to attach, so I'll go like that, and the spine. Can, so see, you're kind of just getting even just a a feel for. And obviously, this isn't worked up at all, and you'd need to figure out the more the more specifics. But you've got a a, a feel for a skull that you it gives you a place to start. These rhythms do. So, and then you would work this up. Okay, so we'll go into the next one. And see, this is just to show you how this hinges up. See, we've got this rhythm down here. The rhythm of the jaw. We've got the rhythm of the zygomatic, okay? That's like a bridge over the, the uh, lower jaw, remember. Now you can see the canines going like this. You can think of the rhythm line when the mouth is open. Think of the rhythm line going from tooth to tooth. So that way you make sure they're lined up properly. When you're doing like that, think of kind of like Pac-Man. So you have a circle and then his mouth is open, right, like that. And then these would just be the teeth, and then you can just erase out the middle. So just think of like Pac-Man when you're thinking about the rhythm from tooth to tooth. And then look at how the socket of the eye changes when you're looking up at it. It's the orbit of the eye, we have this same rhythm here. And then what understanding the bones, the skeleton, does for you is it gives you a sense of what's going on underneath the skin. So that way when you get a cat that's... Uh, so let's see, cat, furry... Oh, yeah, that's, of course, that's gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Furries, huh? Okay, there we go. Fuzzy cat. Guys, when you're searching for cats, don't look up furry cats. When you're looking up animal reference, do not type in the words furry. Type, use the word fuzzy. <laughs> it's going to give you better results. You're not going to get some, uh, you're not going to get furry stuff. <laughs> it's a dangerous keyword. <laughs> All right. And then for something like this, the rhythms would change. It's like, what's going on underneath this skin? You might actually, you might well draw it like this. To start with, you might block it in like this, but isn't it nice to know that, oh, well, I know from doing all those school studies how this goes underneath here. Even though I can't see it on the model, I know it. I know that the this, is, this part of the nose is just cartilage, so I can simplify that. And I know that this right up here is bone. So I know what bone is, I know what cartilage is. So it helps you to see stuff on the model when you understand. So you understand that the ears are not part of the skull. They just sit on top of the skull. And we, you can't see it on the model, but you know that the base of the ear is going to be like that, okay? You know that the shape of the ear is like that. Even if you can't see it, we look for that ball sack shape, right? Boom. We know that. Even if we can't see it as clearly on this cat because the patterning isn't there, it allows us to draw it and understand it. Even if we don't draw this, right? Even if you don't draw it like this because it's so clunky, Having that understanding, like maybe you draw it like more refined, right? Like this. Maybe we only draw a few select lines. Use a bit more visible color. So even if we just end up drawing a few select lines, like this, maybe we just suggest that top part. Even if we just draw this much, having the understanding of this shape allows us to get more of a sense of clarity. And so that, that, uh, that, that knowledge base allows us to see more in the model and allows us to, the more you know, the more you see. So the more anatomy you learn, the more you're gonna see in the model. And you're not, you're not always gonna draw every bit of anatomy. And in fact, drawing too much anatomy and not focusing as much on the shapes can be to your detriment. So you don't wanna draw every bit of, anal of anatomy. You want to learn enough anatomy that you can you know exactly what's important to include. You want to know the big forms that really contribute to an animal's likeness. For example, a cat, there are certain distinguishing features about a cat, the very triangular shapes. And you might want to, if you want to make a cat look more like a cat, if you find a cat that looks like a dog, for example, cat that looks like a dog. So, are there any cats that look like a dog? Let's see. 
this one. Okay, so this is a cat that looks like a dog. This is a cat, but it looks like a dog. So, okay, I'm, uh, let me put this down a bit so now you can see what I see. Yeah, okay. So this is a cat that looks like a dog, right? So you might want to punch up the, the feline features if you were drawing this from, if you're using this cat as your reference and you want to draw a cat. Well, if you draw this cat like it is in the photo, everyone's going to think it's a dog. So you might want to add some ears that are pointy. You might want to accentuate the slant of the eyes. You might want to punch up those feline features, the, the, the features that you spend so much time studying so that people will understand that it's a cat. So knowing this stuff, knowing what makes a cat look like a cat, knowing the rhythm lines of a cat versus the rhythm lines of a dog, knowing the shapes that are that make a cat look like a cat are very valuable tools that you can use in many different contexts, not just when you're drawing a cat. For example, if you have a if you're drawing a dog and your dog starts looking like a cat, you're like, why does it look like a cat? Oh, it's because I have the eyes slanted and the pupils vertical, right? Or it's because I have this very distinct, you know, like the ball sack shape. Or it's because I have the ears too pointed and like this and they look like cat ears. So knowing what a cat looks like also helps you draw things that aren't cats. So all this stuff links together and the rhythm lines that you see that I've drawn in the cats work on humans too, right? The brow, the center line, the maybe the, uh, the muzzle, the ears, the feeding from the ear, top of the ears down to the chin the sternocleidomastoid. These are all rhythm lines that you can use no matter what animal you do, including humans. So yeah, that's, that's what I have to say about rhythm lines. Uh, I enjoyed making this video. Let me know if you want to see more like it. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and I'll make a video on any questions you have. I will, uh, if you have any questions on artists or style, just ask me any questions you want. And when I see the, when I see the questions, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have at all. Um, yeah, I'm going to call it. With that said, let's all take a deep breath. And let's go draw.